Hi, this is Steve at blessedhopeforever.com. Our father Abraham had eight sons. Uh, the record of their names are in the book of Genesis. First, he had Ishmael, who was the son of a slave woman, Hagar of, of Egypt. Uh, that was his mother. She was the slave of Sarah, Abraham's wife. And when Abraham was 99 uh, years of age, Sarah miraculously became pregnant at age 89 and then Isaac was born. Uh, Ishmael hated Isaac. He was jealous of him because Isaac was not a slave child but the special son of God's promise. Abraham had another wife, Keturah. She had six sons by Abraham. So of the eight sons of Abraham, only Isaac was the son of Abraham and Sarah. Only Isaac was the son that uh, God had promised. It's uh, similar really to the story of Joseph in Genesis, you know, where all the brothers hated Isaac just as Joseph's brothers hated him and sold him into slavery. Now listen, God changed Abram's name to Abraham he changed his name to represent what would be done through him because of God's promises. And we, like Isaac, are children of promise. We've been studying together in the epistle to the Galatians verse by verse, and in our last study we were somewhere in the area of verses 6 and 7 of chapter 3. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we stand in your presence by means of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit. So thankful for this opportunity, the opportunity you've given us once again to just come together and feast together on your word. May the Holy Spirit lead us into truth, filter out all of that which is foolish, seal to our hearts the truth of your word that we may grow in grace and knowledge of you for it's in your name i pray amen galatians if you followed us through this verse by verse study uh, last week we were in the area of verses five and six of chapter three We have the Holy Spirit directing Paul to share with the Galatian believers. There were many churches in, in Galatia. Uh, the wonders of God's grace and the terrible blasphemy of legalism. And by legalism, I mean earning merit with God by human works. He therefore that ministers to you the Spirit and works powerfully among you, does he do that? by works of law or by faith's hearing? And the obvious answer is by the hearing of faith. And the illustration is Abraham who believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, I do not want to repeat our last study together but I do want to quickly review where we stood on Abraham. The popular opinion, folks, of modern Christianity and a, a vast majority, and when I use the word popular opinion, it is the vast majority of the opinion today is that Abraham believed God and therefore God imputed to him righteousness. God made him righteous because Abraham believed, and this is directly contrary to the thesis of Galatians. In fact, all of Scripture. Paul is there presenting the grace of God to the believers at Jerusalem, to the leaders of the church. They agreed with him. They, find, they, they found no fault with Paul. They gave him the right hand of fellowship. 
And what Paul is saying is there is no merit in the flesh. It is not by works of flesh that we please God. More than that, it is not by works of law or by works of flesh that we are made righteous. And yet, somehow or other, Christianity in the main teaches that if you believe God and if you accept Christ, you'll be made righteous. You'll be born again. You'll become a new cre uh, creation in Christ Jesus. And what they are telling you is that a depraved flesh that cannot please God, that cannot be subject to God, can please God by accepting Christ. Let's look at Abraham, and, and I'll, do, I'll do this quickly. I, I just want to refresh your memory. Isaiah chapter 51, look to the pit from which you've been digged. Look to Abraham, for I called him alone. Abraham was called long before Abraham ever believed. Now, if you believe the Word of God, and you turn to Romans 8, for whom, he, for whom God did foreknow them, He also did predestinate, not, not some of them, but all of those whom He foreknew. He predestinated to be conformed to the image of His Son. And moreover, all of those whom He did predestinate, He justified, that is, He made righteous. And the simple truth is that Abraham was made righteous before he ever believed. Had he not been made righteous, he could not have believed. It is just that simple. The fundamental truth of, of Galatians, in fact, of all of Scripture, is that life precedes faith. The fundamental preaching of Christianity today is that faith precedes life. They put the cart before the horse. That is not only anti-biblical, it is blasphemous. It accredits to the flesh that which God vehemently denies. So Abraham was called before he ever believed. You shouldn't miss the first verse of Genesis 15. Everybody goes to verse 6. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. But verse 1 says, I, the Lord, am your great reward. Okay? Abraham was God's. He had been foreknown, predestinated, called, justified. All whom he called, he made righteous. And Abraham was called. Now, the capstone of that of course, is the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John. In the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John, here we have Jesus Christ. He's speaking to the same Pharisee faction of people who questioned Christ. It was, it was these Pharisees who were proponents of the law. They had, they had written so much minutia on the law that no one could possibly have kept it anyway, and yet we know biblically they couldn't keep it because they are depraved, but it, it is these people who are talking to Christ, not some uneducated hillbilly from eastern Oklahoma. No, no, that's, that's kind of racial, I, I guess. I, I'm sorry, I just, I just know that here in Oklahoma, I talk over their heads. He's talking to the educated elite, the Jews, the attorneys, the, the lawyers, the, the theologians. Why do you not hear my speech? Because, because ye are not my sheep. Somehow or other, Christianity today, and I use the word, in, I put that in quotes, modern so-called Christianity 
is persuaded that man must initiate the process. Man, man must first of all believe before, before anything happens. Man must accept before anything happens that they close their eyes to the truth of the Word of God. What do you need to believe in Jesus Christ? Well, you need to be His sheep. And that's what you are. You are the sheep of His pasture, the children of His household, and it's for you that He's provided. This is what He meant when He said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John chapter 4, 14, verse 27. I am 100% firmly convinced that because that truth is not emphasized, the Word of God is demeaned and it is discredited. It is not held in high regard. Large churches today, I've, I've talked to pastors, well, you don't really believe in inerrant Scripture, do you? Well, absolutely. If I didn't believe in an in a inerrant Bible, I wouldn't preach. If this, is, if this Word of God that we, we study, if this is as poor as all the other textbooks and operating manuals that I read, then I don't have time to come here it's, it is a waste of time to study and teach, yet I find a vast majority of people who say that they are Christian, whether they admit it or not, they have a very low regard for the Word of God. For that reason, there isn't much peace. This God declares that He loves you. He gave His own Son to die in your place. Can't He do with you as He pleases? Who in the world wants to be rich if God wants them poor? Who in the world wants to be well if God wants us sick? And yet Christians, in the main, are as, as complaining a community as anyone else. It is God who is working in you both the will and the do of His good pleasure. If you know that and trust in that, that's, that's wonderful. If you don't, you can kick against it. And folks, it won't make any difference. You won't be very happy. You won't be very peaceful. And the only difference that it'll make is in your attitude. Because God is working in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. Do not take that verse to believe that Abraham, a depraved individual, and in fact an idol worshiper, suddenly said, oh, I'm going to believe in God. Didn't happen. Didn't happen, folks. The first thing that happened is that God foreknew him. The second thing that happened, if you put if you put any, any time sequence on it, and, and I'm not really willing to do that, but the second thing that happened is God predestinated him. The third thing that happened is that God called him. God called him. And the fourth thing is he made him righteous. God made him righteous. Is he righteous? Absolutely. He believed God and was shown to be righteous. The word accounted there is the word legizomai. It is to reach the logical conclusion. And, and I tried to point out if, if you have, you know, two plus two and you said, you know, you said, Eureka, that's four. Okay, you believing it is four didn't make it four. It is for, whether you believe it or not. Abraham is righteous, and his believing shows that he's righteous. 
That is the logical conclusion of believing God. God's sheep believe. My sheep hear my voice. I give unto them eternal life. Who did He give eternal life to? His sheep. They were already His sheep. They, they weren't goats. They were His sheep. Know ye therefore that they which are of are they which are from faith the same are the sons of Abraham. Now we want to keep that in mind as we reach the end of this chapter in a millennia or, or two. So don't forget the truths that we learn as we move along. Please, folks, don't don't forget things as we move along. Verse 8, in the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through, that is, ek, out of, out from faith, preached before the gospel, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. Okay? And God foreseeing that He would justify the heathen by means of, of faith or from faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham. Now, now let me ask you a, a question. Let me ask you a, a very silly question. How much of the Bible that we are reading today was written when Abraham was alive? You know, the answer is none. And yet, it preached the gospel to Abraham. The, the minute people read this verse, the Scriptures, or at least Genesis to Malachi, and well, I guess to the more enlightened, it's, it's uh, Genesis to Revelation, none of which was in print or written at all when Abraham was called out of Ur of the, Ur of the Chaldees, and yet the Holy Spirit uses the term here that the Scriptures preach the Gospel to Abraham. Amazing. There, there's an eternality in this term Scripture. It is God Himself. I cannot put into language, folks, with, with what high regard that you ought to hold the Scriptures. They are not held in high regard today. There are some who hesitatingly admit that maybe, maybe this book contains the Word of God, but it's not, it's not just... But it, it's so full of inaccuracies that it can't be the an inerrant Word of God. It, it's really astounding how the human mind thinks. We now know a lot more about the human DNA and we know uh, that what, like 90% of it is the same as an ape? You know, 70, 80% of it. It's the same as a chicken. So, so now suddenly we have profound evidence of evolution. Uh, let me propose a simple illustration. I, I don't know who the most inventive person in the church is. So, so let, let me make one up, all right? Some individual like Edison, you know, even, even better than Edison, you know, he, he's a good inventor, so he invents a cotton gin. And he uses bolts and nuts and, and I don't know, lock washers and steel and, and aluminum and copper and brass and rubber and I don't know what else, whatever. And he puts together that, and then he decides to invent a telephone. And so <coughs> with the telephone... He used bolts and nuts and rubber and wire and copper and some plastic and buttons. And, and then he thinks, well, what the heck, I'm going to invent an airplane. So he uses bolts and nuts. And, and now we geniuses, thousands of years later, well, we look at all this stuff and we say, uh-huh, you know, started out with a telephone and it evolved into a cotton gin, and then into an automobile, and then it came up to an airplane. It all evolved. 
No, no, the inventor used a bolt here. Might as well use a bolt over there. A totally different product. You know, I guess the trouble with my illustration is, is that the human today would look at it and we'd say, you know, oh, these are evidences of design. You telling me when you look at creation, there are no evidences of design? None of you here watching me, listening to me, really know how the leaves that, I don't think, I don't think you know how the leaves at the top of a redwood tree ever get water. Oh, you might, you maybe, maybe you think you do with what you call capillary action. You're not sure. The pressures would be intense. Tree ought to explode at the bottom. You don't know. Evidences of design, fantastic, yet, yet totally ignored by man. Why? Because he doesn't hold the Word of God in high regard. Do we? When God says He's working all things together for your good, that ought to settle it. When God says He loves you with an everlasting love, He does. When God says He's working in you both the will and the do of His good pleasure, He is. He never said it'd be easy. But folks, it ought to be beyond wonderful. The Scriptures, God, His eternal Word, don't treat it lightly. Zero Bible written when Abraham was alive. None, and yet it preached the Gospel to Abraham. And I stand before God and wonder the Scriptures foreseeing because, because it's God's Word and it can't be separated from God Almighty. He says, I have exalted my Word above all my name. You know, people, and people will say, well, you know, humans put it together. Well, humans wrote it, but they didn't author it. God used humans to put it together in, in the canon of Scripture as He used humans to pen the words, but He's the author. This is God's Word we're talking about. The, the Scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. Through faith. In Peter, the second, in Second Peter, uh, chapter three, look at the fourteenth verse of the third chapter of Second Peter. Wherefore, beloved, you know it's wonderful that God loves us. Wherefore, you who are loved, and those are God's sheep, seeing that ye look for such things. Be diligent, be diligent, that you may be found of Him in peace. Found of Him in peace. I run into Christians, and very seldom are they in peace. You know, they, they just can't believe the guy that we have in the White House. And, and I, I look at him and I say, God put him there. God put him there. And, and, and they just, they, I don't know, they want to they clobber me. They want to shoot me. Dearly beloved, the powers that be are ordained of God. He sets up over the nations of men, whomsoever He will. And whether you like it or not, God is judging this nation and He will set up in places of high authority that which is necessary to bring this nation down. I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Now, if you had, if you had a vibrant Christian as president, he'd, never, he'd probably never ordered the armies to go against Jerusalem to battle. Wouldn't happen. 
be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. That's what you are. That's what you are. God wants you to realize that. That's what you are in Christ. And consider the long suffering of our Lord is deliverance. Okay? People don't want him to wait. But but folks, had the Lord not long suffered, I might not have been born and had the wonderful privilege of even of, of, of redemption by the grace of God and fellowship with the sovereign majesty of eternity and fellowship with you dear folks. Okay? There are at least two serious warnings in the scriptures about adding or subtracting from what God said. There's a tremendous amount today of adding and subtracting. You know, the Word of God has been replaced with music and, 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 and you know, I don't know, cute little sayings. Uh, I drove by a church the other day, you know, today, today is the tomorrow you worried about yesterday. Well, isn't, isn't, that, isn't that cute? No. Nah. No, it's not. It, it's, uh, it, it's something that doesn't do one thing spiritually for you, and yet it's on a church marquee. Church after church, singing. You know, they're, they're, they're not going to sing Scripture. They're, they're not going to sing things written by the Holy Spirit. They're going to sing things written by man. Now, I'm not saying that's always the case, but... In the main. Now, folks, I have nothing against music. I, I'm thrilled that there's a, an emotional side of Christianity, but the emotion should never, never control the intellect. The intellect should control the emotion. Intellectually, God chose me in Christ before the foundation of the world. And He made me righteous by the obedience of Christ. Emotionally, I can sing. How can I do less than, than give Him my best or whatever? As long as I control that emotion with the intellectual truth of the Word of God. Much of Christianity, too much of modern so-called Christianity is emotion. Very little doctrine. Doctrine divides. You know, we, we want unity and love and, 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 you know, who knows what. The Scriptures. I, I can't tell you how high that you should regard the Word of God. You have no greater privilege. You have no greater wonder than to hold in your hands the Word of the living, sovereign, majestic God. Okay, the one who made you righteous by the faithfulness of Christ. Not your own faithfulness, but by the faithfulness of Christ. You know, I'm, I'm astounded. People tell me, well, you got to accept Christ to be redeemed. Well, wait a minute. Now, I, I have a verse. You can see it here. The Scripture preached the Gospel to Abraham it wasn't even written in, but it was God. And God says that by the disobedience of Adam, I was made unrighteous. I was made a sinner. And by the obedience of Christ, not my own, but by the, in the same way, by the obedience of Christ, I was made righteous. Now, I, I neither accepted Adam's disobedience nor Christ's obedience in order to be made righteous. Somehow or other, Pelagius and Arminius, well, they seem to have won. They seem to have conquered. And modern Christianity says, you know, you got to do it when God declares, hey, I already did it. You're made righteous. What was preached to Abraham? That in thee shall all nations be blessed. Because Jesus Christ came from the lineage of Abraham. 
We get down to verse 9. So then they which be of faith are blessed, that's us, are blessed with faithful Abraham. Blessed with faithful Abraham. Big lesson in Abraham. I love you all. I truly do. Rest in Him. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.